Hi friends, I think everyone has LED flashlights. Some enthusiasts even collect them. I also have at least three powerful ones. But when you need to illuminate a large space, such lanterns aren't suitable because of the insufficiency of the light flux. In such situations, sometimes we need spotlights, so I decided to make one for me. In fact, it's a portable 100 watt flashlight. Such were collected by many. But I'm going to release two videos about this topic, during which I will explain all the nuances and problems that can be encountered during the assembly. As already mentioned, in ordinary situations, a person doesn't need a spotlight. 10 to 15 watt LED flashlights can light up the whole street as a car's inner lamp. Imagine the light from a 100 watt flashlight. As usual, all the necessary information, including a circuit with a list of used components, can be found in the description. Now let's go to the point. My version will be assembled according to the traditional design, which includes battery, protection board, inverter, and LED itself. The brightness adjustment will be stepped and realized with the switch. We have five modes of operation. The first mode, the power of the LED, is limited to 5 watts. The second mode is 15 watts. The third is 30. The fourth mode is 50. And finally, the fifth mode is the maximum power. As the lantern is portable, it is powered by the battery. The battery is lithium-ion. In my case, it is assembled from 18 650 cells. All are used and taken from laptop batteries. I must say that these batteries aren't designed to work on high currents. Their nominal output current shouldn't be more than their own capacity. For example, if the bank is 2 amperes hour, it is desirable to discharge it with no more than 2 amperes or 4 amperes maximum, but not long term. Of course, there are batteries that can discharge currents of 20 to 30 amperes hour. Links to them can be found in the description. It is advisable to use a battery of 10 to 12 volts, that is, an assembly of three cells connected in series will have the nominal voltage is 10.8 and the voltage of a fully charged battery is 12.6 volts. In order to increase the total capacity of the accumulator and hence the operating time, several cans are connected in parallel. My battery consists of three assemblies that are connected in series. Each such assembly in its composition has four parallel connected cells. As a result, I got a 8 amperes battery with a nominal voltage of 10.8 volts. Due to the parallel connection of the cans, we not only got a larger battery, but also increased the maximum discharged current. This assembly can be safely discharged with a current of 8 to 10 amperes and up to 16 to 18 amperes for a short time. To solder such batteries is extremely not desirable, so I used a self-made device for contact welding. The assembly process of that device is shown in one of the previous videos. The link will be in the description. The finished battery was wrapped up in everything that is at hand. Knowing the capacitance and voltage of the battery, we can calculate the operating time of the flashlight. And we must take into account the efficiency of the converter. But we will talk about this a little later. Now let's speak about protection and charge board. Almost all lithium-ion batteries are equipped with these boards. As we know, lithium-ion batteries are very sensitive to the parameters of charge and discharge. These processes must be carefully controlled. If the battery is discharged too much, it could cause irreparable damage. 
Same can happen if overcharging. Such ports disconnect the battery in case of strong discharge or short circuits and prevent overcharging. Here is a test. I make artificial short circuit. After a short time, the board automatically exits the protection. If the short circuit isn't eliminated, the protection triggers again. My protection board was taken from the laptop battery, so protection works at currents of about 5 to 6 amperes, but this isn't enough for my purposes. On these boards, as a current sensor, installed a low impedance shunt. In order to increase the protection current twice, it is necessary to solder another resistor in parallel with the shunt. Just a small rework. Of course, you can buy such a protection board for currents of 20 amperes or more at online shops. They cost a few dollars, but in my case, it didn't make sense to purchase a new one. Powerful LED is built on the basis of matrix of light emitting diodes. In my case, it is a 100 watt matrix. The parameters are now in front of you. I bought this on AliExpress. It consists of 100 separate LEDs per 1 watt each. The supply voltage of such matrices depends on the manufacturer and usually from 30 to 40 volts. In my case, it is powered from 35 volts, but as you remember, my battery is only 12 volts. To solve this problem, I need an inverter. The inverter is a voltage converter which raises 12 volts from the battery to the desired 35, but not everything is so simple. Here is one of the examples of such converters. This option is often used by do-it-yourself amateurs to build homemade powerful 100 watt flashlights. But this is self-delusion. This converter doesn't work properly if the 12 volt battery serves as a power source. It isn't good for two reasons. The first well-known reason is that the LED is fed by a current source, not a voltage. Therefore, it is very important to monitor the current flowing through the LED. Usually, resistors are used for this purpose. If the LED is too powerful, the supplying driver is equipped with a function of current limitation. The maximum current of the LED is usually indicated by the manufacturer, and it is advisable not to increase this limit, otherwise the LED will burn out. In our case, we necessarily need an inverter with a function of voltage and current stabilization simultaneously. Here is one of the options. Such inverters have the abbreviations CV and CC, that is, a constant or stable voltage and current. The second reason is that with a simple inverter, which has only voltage stabilization, it is impossible to overclock the 100 watt LED to maximum power from 12 volts battery. Here is the confirmation of my words. The multimeter shows the voltage on the battery. The inverter is connected to the battery and the power meter is connected to the output of the inverter. We can see that the output voltage of the inverter is slightly more than 35 volts. When the LED is connected, the battery voltage drops slightly, but this is normal, since the nominal voltage of the battery should be around 10.8 volts. But the wattmeter shows that the voltage of the output of the inverter declined, and the maximum power isn't 100 watts, but slightly more than 60. Such an inverter would put up if the battery were to say 24 volts, but from 12, unfortunately not. Let's test the second inverter. This board has a current limiting function and a sensible control of the output power realized through the operational amplifier chip. The test conditions are the same. The output voltage of the inverter is also set around 35 volts. This time the power is more than 80 watts. It is 20 watts more than with the previous inverter. It means the LED with this inverter will shine about 20 to 30 percent brighter than with the first inverter. Of course, we have the ability to adjust the brightness through the current adjustment, not the voltage. For this purpose, a trimmer is provided on the board. Powerful LEDs are powerfully heated. 
If you don't remove heat, the matrix will burn out after a couple of seconds. For cooling, I took the heat sink from the computer processor and attached the fan. The fan can also be from the processor, but I have already prepared the box in which the native cooler simply could not put. An additional switch allows manually turn on the fan. At a power less than 20 watts, no need to blow. Now it's time to finish this part. In the next video, we will start assembling the flashlight. I will explain a step-by-step -step how to organize power adjustment to make the box. I will remind you once again that all the necessary information will be found in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to my group in Facebook. The link is under the description. Goodbye, until next video. With you was Kassian TV.